Good morning, good morning. It is your boy, Jake Goble, back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. Day 159 of our daily Bible reading, daily Bible reading together. It is June 8th. It's my birthday. I know, I know. You Happy birthday. Thank you. But that's not what we're here for. We're not here to celebrate me. We're here to celebrate God's word and finish Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Finishing Ecclesiastes and getting back at it with 1 Kings and 2 Chronicles. Of course, we are finishing up Solomon's life where he died a few days ago that we read. And then we're finishing up the wisdom literature that he wrote. And then we're going to get into Jeroboam and Rehoboam and the separation of the kingdom. So let's finish up Ecclesiastes 11, starting in verse 7 here. Starting in verse 7. Truly the light is sweet. And it is a pleasant thing for the eyes to see the sun. I got to tell you, I believe that to the very core of my being. I'm over here, out here in Chicago, Chicago, just south of Chicago. And when it is winter, it is long. In spring, it's winter. It was long. And no sun, it wears on me. It wears on me. I got to be honest with you, it wears on me. But it is a pleasant thing for the eyes to see the sun. Verse 8, yes, if a man lives many years, let him rejoice in them all all but let him remember the days of darkness for they shall be many all that comes is vanity rejoice young man in your youth and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth and walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes but know that for all these things god will bring you into judgment therefore remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh for youth and the dawn of life are vanity Put away evil from your flesh. We, I, th- I think we could, we could all use a, with a little bit more of that. We could all, all, all have a little more of that. That's the great lie, I think, for most of us who profess Christ. That it doesn't, you know, you don't need to. Why are you so zealous? Why are you so sold out? Haven't you been forgiven? You don't have to worry about that. You're fine. You're good. It's just a little sin. Just a little, nobody knows. That's the killer right there. Nobody knows. God knows. God knows. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun, the light, the moon, and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease because they are few and those who look out of the windows are darkened and the doors shall be shut in the street when the sound of the grinding is low and one shall rise up at the voice of a bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Yes, they shall be afraid of heights and terrors will be on the way and the almond tree shall blossom and the grasshopper shall be a burden and desire shall fail. Because man goes to his everlasting home and the mourners go about the streets before the silver cord is broken. Oops. Before the silver cord is severed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher is broken at the spring or the wheel broken at the cistern and the dust returns to the earth as it was and the spirit returns to God who gave it vanity of vanities, says the preacher. All is vanity. Further, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered, sought out, and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written blamelessly, words of truth. The words of the wise are like goads and like nails well fastened are words from the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. Furthermore, my son, be admonished. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. This is the end of the matter. All has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment with every hidden thing, whether it is good or whether it is evil. I got it. Let's let's pray real quick and then we'll keep going. Let's pray real quick and then we'll keep going. Father, we pour out our hearts to you. We have we have done this. We have sinned. We have not done as we ought. We have not feared you as we ought. We have not kept your commandments. Have mercy on us, we pray. Look to the work of the Lord Jesus Christ instead of our wickedness and our evil and our sin. Forgive us. 
Conform us to the image of your Son. Give us grace to obey your word. Purify us, we pray. Amen. All right. So I need, and man, woo, got you. Sometimes it gets you and it gets you. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. I, but I am so busy with so many other things, God. But I am so busy with so many other things. Don't matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Everything else could be going okay. Everything else could be going well. But if you're not doing that, we are not doing right. First Kings 12. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it, for he was in Egypt, where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam lived in Egypt, and they sent and called him. Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke difficult. Now therefore make the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter, and we will serve you. That is just fascinating to me. I got to tell you, right? Because remember, we read a few days ago, if you're first time joining us, welcome. If, you're, if you've are if you been listening for, for a while, welcome back. But remember, we had just read about Jeroboam. Jeroboam was out in the field and a, a prophet of God met him. It was a one-on-one type of thing. Nobody else was around to hear and nobody was around to know, around to know but it was kind of weird. Remember, he said, I am going to give the kingdom to you, but only 10 parts. Remember, torn the robe or the garment, 12 pieces. Ten are for you, two are going to stay there. And he said, because they have not obeyed because of their sin, but I'm not going to do it during my, my servant Solomon's reign. I'm going to do it during his son's reign. So it's his son's reign. Jeroboam knows this. Jeroboam remembers this, but still he comes. He comes to Rehoboam and he says, yo, you could do right. Rehoboam said to them, Verse five, depart for three days, then come back to me. So the people departed. King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, saying, what counsel do you give me to answer these peoples? They replied, if you will be a servant to these people, to this people today, sorry, and will serve them and answer them with good words, then they will be your servants forever. Because remember, Solomon had a huge tax. He built, remember, he built the palaces, he built houses, he built everything. And that came at the expense of the people. Which remember, when the children of Israel asked for a king to go before them, God said, I am going to put kings over you and they are going to. Take your sons for their armies, your daughters for your servants, your money, your stuff. They're going to take things to build their kingdom. And the people said, that's what we want. That's what we want. King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. They replied, if you'll be a servant to these people, so serve them, like have some mercy, some mercy. Like everything's built. Let's, let's, Let's turn down the taxes. Let's be a servant leader to these people. Verse eight, but he abandoned the counsel of the old men, which they had given him and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. He said to them, what counsel do you give me that we may answer these people who have spoken to me saying, make the yoke that your father put on us lighter. The young men who had grown up with him said to him, tell these people who spoke to you saying, your father make our yoke, made our yoke heavy, but make, but make it lighter to us. Tell them my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now my father burdened you with a heavy yoke, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Now, I don't think the translation is really great here. There's some, there's some top, but like he's, something about his father's waist, but not his father's waist. He's like, my little finger is thicker than my father's, you know what? So it's like, they it's not great counsel. It's not great counsel. And he, they're not being real gracious. And he's not being gracious when he talks to them. My father will chastise you with whips. I'm going to chastise you with scorpions. You ain't seen nothing yet, Bo. That's kind of what is going on here. Verse 12. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day and the king asked saying, as the king asked saying, come to me again the third day. The king answered the people roughly and abandoned the counsel of the old men, which they had given him and spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men saying, my father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king didn't listen to the people for it was a thing brought about from Yahweh that he might establish his word, which Yahweh spoke by Ahijah, the Shilonite to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Remember that was the, that was out in the field. When all Israel saw that the king didn't listen to them, the people answered the king saying, what portion have we in David? 
We don't have an inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, Israel. Now see to your own house, David. So Israel departed to their tents. But as for the children of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram. Oh, was I supposed to go all the way to the end? Uh, Yeah, I was supposed to go to verse 20. So here we go. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the men subject to forced labor, and all Israel stoned him to death with stones. King Rehoboam hurried to get himself up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against David's house to this day. So he is, uh, the, uh, the children of Israel are like, yo, fine, you're on your own. And then Rehoboam sends this dude as if everything is normal, as if everything's okay, as if it's all going to be like it was, and it's not. And when Adoram shows up, the people stone him. Yeah. Things have changed, sir. Things have changed. All right, so now we're going to read the same thing in Second Chronicles chapter 10, verse 1. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it, heard of it, for he was in Egypt, where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon, Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. They sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all Israel came, and they spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore make the grievous service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter, and we will serve you. It's like, was he really going to? We got a lot behind the scenes, you know, but he did right. He did right and he submitted himself to the Lord's anointing. But then God was going to do what he do. He said to them, come again to me after three days. So the people departed. King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, saying, what counsel do you give me about how to answer these people? They spoke to him, saying, if you are kind to these people, please them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. That is the servants. So that's ah, so real quick, real quick, real quick. So they said, he said, if you will be a servant to these people, be a servant to this people, what does that look like? If you're kind to them, you please them, speak good words to them. It's what service looks like. At least here, quick, quick little definition, quick little definition of what servant leadership looks like. Kindness, pleasing them, speak good words to them, working for them. You work for them. But he abandoned the counsel of the old men, verse 8, which they had given him, and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. He said to them, What counsel do you give that we may give an answer to these people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke that your father put on us lighter. The young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, Thus you shall tell the people who spoke to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now, whereas my father burdened you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king asked, saying, Come to me again the third day. The king answered them roughly, and King Rehoboam abandoned the counsel of the old men and spoke to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king didn't listen to the people, for it was brought about by God that Yahweh might establish his word, which he spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. When all Israel saw that the king didn't listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion do we have in David? We don't want an inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents, Israel. Now see to your own house, David. So all Israel departed to their tents. But as for the children of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadaram, who was, over, who was over the men subject to forced labor, and the children of Israel stoned him to death with stones. King Rehoboam hurried to get himself up to his chariot and flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against David's house to this day. All right, now we're back in 1 Kings 12, 21 through 24. When Rehoboam had come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. So he's like, hey, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight these guys. I'm going to subdue them. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin and to the rest of the people, saying, Yahweh says... You shall not go up or fight against your brothers, the children of Israel. Everyone return to his house, for this thing is from me. 
So they listened to Yahweh's word and returned and went their way according to Yahweh's word. That's through verse 24, Second Chronicles 11, 1 through 4. When Rehoboam had come to Jerusalem, he assembled the house of Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors, to fight against Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. But Yahweh's word came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel and Judah and Benjamin, saying, Yahweh says, You shall not go up, nor fight against your brothers. Every man return to his house, for this thing is of me. So they listened to Yahweh's words and returned from going against Jeroboam. Back into 1 Kings, verse, uh, chapter 12, verses 25 through 33, which is to the end of the chapter. Nice. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived in it. And he went out from there and built Penuel. Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will return to David's house. If this people goes up to offer sacrifices in Yahweh's house at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn again to their lord, even to Rehoboam, the king of Judah, and they will kill me, and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold. And he said to them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Look and behold your gods, Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Sound familiar, right? Sounds familiar. He set the one in Bethel and the other he put in Dan. This thing became a sin for the people even went as far as Dan to worship before the one there. He made houses of high places and made priests from among all the people who were not of the sons of Levi. Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month, like the feast that is in Judah, and he went up to the altar. He did so in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places he had made. He went up to the altar which he had made in, in Bethel on the fifteenth day in the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and he ordained a feast for the children of Israel and went up to the altar to burn incense. It is interesting. I see a lot of that myself in him, to be honest with you. It's like God has a, God told you, God met you, or he sent his prophet to you, said he was going to do this with you. And what you received, it wasn't of your own doing. It was from God. But now you're worried. Now you're worried to keep it. Now you want to hang on to it. Now something that was given to you by God, you think that you can keep in your own power. Our salvation is like that, isn't it? It is a gift of God. He has turned our hearts to himself. He has purified us. He has washed us. He has cleansed us. He has provided the path back to him and drawn us unto himself. And then we are, we get on the path. We get on the road. We get saved. And then we're like, mm, I got this. I can do this. I can sanctify myself. I can purify myself. I can do this all myself. I don't need you. I don't need to hang on. Jeroboam should have said, yeah, that's right. That's where we go to worship God. That's where we go to worship God. But he was worried about losing what God had given, given him. I don't want to lose my stuff. I don't want to lose my position. It wasn't yours, bro. It, was, it wasn't yours to begin with. God gave you something. And if he takes it away, praise him. If I keep it, praise him. If he takes it away, praise him. Second Chronicles 11, 5 through 17. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. He built Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethsur, Soka, Adullam, Gath, Merashah, Ziph, Adarim. Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Aizalon, and Hebron, which are fortified cities in Judah and in Benjamin. He fortified the strongholds and put captains in them and stores of food, oil, and wine. Isn't it funny? He's worried. <laughs> Jeroboam was worried. Rehoboam's worried. They're both worried, losing something that wasn't theirs to begin with, that God gave to them, that they didn't earn, that they didn't get of their own accord. <laughs> he put shields and spears in every city and made them exceedingly strong. It was verse 12. Judah and Benjamin belonged to him. Verse 13, the priests and the Levites who were in all Israel stood with him out of all their territory for the Levites left their pasture lands and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem for Jeroboam and his sons cast them off that they should not execute the priest's office to Yahweh. He himself appointed priests for the high places, for the male goats and for the calves, which he had made after them out of all the tribes of Israel. Those who set their heart to seek Yahweh, the God of Israel came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to Yahweh, the God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong for three years. For they walked three years in the ways 
of David and Solomon. It's interesting because Rehoboam didn't, he didn't start off well, you know, he didn't start off well, but at least for three years, it looks like he was doing what he was supposed to be doing. So, all right. Well, what time is it? We've been going just over 20 minutes here. We're going to pray for Brian and Worry Blackburn with Mercy Ships Worldwide. If you remember, we prayed for them a while ago, probably last month. Brian and Worry, they've got a new ship, the Africa Mercy, and they ask that it be used as a tool for physical and spiritual healing for those it serves. Wisdom for them in their new positions at headquarters with Mercy Mercy Ships Worldwide. That's the organization that they belong to. So if you're driving, eyes open, pay attention to the road. If not, close them, do whatever you want to. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your word. We come before you again, asking that we would be not like Rehoboam and Jeroboam, worried about keeping our stuff, worried about keeping our places, worried about keeping things which we earned. I earned this. But in reality, it was a gift from you. I didn't earn it. We didn't earn it. We had no business being in these places and these things. You were merciful when you granted them to us. Give us grace to change our hearts, focus our minds, to be obsessed and zealous for you, the things of God. That that would be our primary objective that we would cast off our pet sins, that we would cast off the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, that we would cast off the love of money, the love of evil, the love of gathering possessions up that we're not going to be able to take with us. Instead, that we would be as Rehoboam should have been, that we would pour out our lives, our very being as a drink offering before you in service to others. Give us grace to do that. Give us strength to do that. Draw near for us to do that. And we lift up Brian and Worry Blackburn with Mercy Ships Worldwide and pray that you would bless the Africa Mercy, that you would bless Brian and Worry, that you would give them wisdom in their new positions, that you would give them a zealousness such as they have never had before, and that they would have a dedication and love for you and then for each other. And that you would be glorified and that you would be happy to use the Africa mercy for physical and spiritual healing all across Africa, everywhere it goes, everywhere it goes, that it would be a bright light and a beacon of grace and mercy, physical and spiritual, that you would be glorified. We pray these things in the name of our Savior, who we're trying to be like in Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening. Thanks for hanging with me. Um, I'm going to holler at you tomorrow. If you got anything, notmanynoble at gmail.com. Show notes at notmanynoble.com. Otherwise, I'm out. I'm out. I'm going to go celebrate. Celebrate this birthday and get after it. So thanks for listening. Have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.